Chapter 9, Inside the Confederation. Quote from Ra, If there is fear and doom, the contact was likely of a negative nature. If the result is hope, friendly feelings, and the awakening of a positive feeling of purposeful service to others, the marks of Confederation contact are evident. End quote. I'm sure you remember those colorful episodes on the original Star Trek series in which the Federation had its governing meetings aboard the USS Enterprise. There were all sorts of strange-looking ambassadors speaking in weird tongues, chatting among themselves garbed in far-out cosmic costumes. Of course, that was just a story, wasn't it? And of course, since Earth is the only planet in the universe hosting intelligent life, there couldn't really be such a thing as this kind of intergalactic administration. Fiction is fiction, right? Well, according to 6,000 years of Eastern mystic traditions, hundreds of channeled books worldwide, and millions of people who claim to have had paranormal experience, Earth is not alone. The universe is teeming with intelligent life, and much of that life is far more intelligent than what we find here on Earth. Back in the 1950s, UFO study groups claimed to be in contact with the Space Brothers. Today, thousands of people around the globe believe in or channel the Ashtar Command, a term also coined in the 1950s by contactees and groups who claim to be in communication with a federation of benevolent ETs under the direction of a leader named Ashtar. In the raw material, a great deal of information is presented on, quote, the confederation of planets in service to the one infinite creator. Not the most catchy title, but another reference to the same type of cosmic collective as the Space Brothers, or Ashtar Command. Apparently, the endless sightings of lone UFOs in night skies are just the tip of an iceberg, and we must seriously consider the possibility of a massively coordinated extraterrestrial presence on Earth. While the existence of such cosmic governance has not yet been empirically proven to the satisfaction of skeptics, and probably never will be, I believe their message has certainly been sent. When we begin to examine the role of ETs in human history and their function on Earth at the present time, we have to raise questions of collective purpose and intelligently coordinated design. We cannot afford not to. The raw group also stated that they are an active member of this same confederation. Taking some passages from the first volume of The Law of One will give us a better foundation for understanding this collective group and their work on Earth. Who are the Confederation members? Quote, There are approximately 53 civilizations, comprising approximately 500 planetary consciousness complexes in this Confederation. It contains those from your own planet who have attained dimensions beyond your own, planetary entities within your solar system, and planetary entities from other galaxies, i.e. solar systems. It is a true confederation in that its members are not alike but allied in service according to the law of one. Question. Do some confederation members appear as UFOs? Quote. There have been as many as 15 of the confederation entities in your skies at any one time. The others are available to you through thought. Their purposes are very simple. To allow those entities of your planet to become aware of infinity, the mysterious or unknown. End quote. What about cases of direct contact? Quote, the most efficient mode of contact is that which you experience at this space-time, i.e. their channeling sessions. The infringement upon free will is greatly undesired. Therefore, those entities which are wanderers will be the only subjects for the thought projections which make up the so-called close encounters and meetings between this confederation and wanderers. The feeling of being awakened is the goal of this type of contact. If the result is hope, friendly feelings, and the awakening of a positive feeling of purposeful service to others, the marks of confederation contact are evident. These are provocative statements, and their implications are huge. Clearly, any such planetary or interplanetary federation is a serious matter which involves dozens of races from different solar systems jointly responsible for hundreds of planets. I know it is a far more serious matter than the somewhat glib way in which it's been presented in most of the popular E.T. channeled books. As for those sneaky little UFOs who dart away as soon as they're spotted and rarely stop to say hello, 
According to Ra's understanding, it's not their agenda to prove their own existence. In fact, distant sightings of Confederation, Confederation member ships, in distinction to those of other less benevolent ETs, have nothing to do with revealing their secrets. Their sole purpose is to tease open our sleeping awareness. Their goal is simple, to help us become aware of infinity and jumpstart our spiritual seeking. Many of the strange sightings are not ships at all, but rather thought projections, which is another reason why they flaunt the known laws of physics. Confederation groups sincerely hope we open our eyes to galactic grandeur, but they will not force them open. What are the chances of direct physical contact, the hope of many a UFO researcher, ET walk-in, and wanderer? At present, it seems highly unlikely that large numbers of people will experience such contact. This is the so-called mass landing scenario predicted by a few somewhat discredited ET channels. Not because the Confederation is stingy with their time, but rather because their duty is to safeguard our free choice, which in this case means the unstated opposition of most of humanity to open meeting and cooperation. Their freedom to sleep must not be broached. Strange, but true. Were the benevolent ET groups to openly walk among us, as some did in Atlantis, Egypt, and South America, when today but a tiny handful of people truly desire ET contact, would most certainly be infringement upon free will. Of course, not the free will of the seekers, who fervently wait for physical contact, but rather the will of the overwhelming majority, who follow normal earth religions and recognize their own, quote, higher power, in addition to the multitudes who could not care less about cosmic unity, many of whom are simply trying to stay alive. Such meticulous service, extending even to those who wish to remain unaware of greater life, shows clearly how this confederation operates. They are pledged to serve all beings. Unless the mass of humanity makes a major shift towards conscious cosmic calling, I believe that the hope for benevolent mass landing will remain unrequited. Any channel who tells you otherwise should be asked to fully explain their understanding of the law of free will. Some people, however, will have sightings, dreams, visions, and other close encounters with benevolent ETs. According to Ra, if the contact was inspirational, filled with good feelings, and resulted in a renewed desire for self-understanding and service to others, then it surely was confederation contact. But it also means one more thing. It means you are an ET soul. Since, according to this view, wanderers are the only ones who are now given this sort of meeting. Such extreme selectivity is not due to any kind of elite status of the so-called starborn, but rather it's yet another way to protect the natives whose spiritual development must not be hampered by what we could call, quote, artificially induced paradigm shift. If you have had this kind of profound ET contact, then you should really ask yourself if you could be from elsewhere. Our discussion of ET confederation provides us with a vision of vast interstellar cooperation and extreme purity of service. It points to a grand evolutionary design, coordinated and planned by beings from all reaches of the galaxy, standing behind the scattered UFO sightings and ET contacts we all read about. More than a few New Age teachers and seekers, myself included, believe Earth will soon become a member planet in this galactic grouping. If it is to be, it must await our greater opening to interspecies contact, the intensification of human calling, and the clear consensus among the family of Terran humanity that we need benevolent ET support. But not to worry, the Confederation can wait. Next, our discussion will go even deeper into cosmic laws that stand behind the Confederation's extreme reluctance to interfere directly in human affairs. This is the Law of Free Will.